Hi, you guys. So you guys seem to love these commentaries so, so much. So it's basically going to be like a 15-minute lesson for you. Um, so a bit of Yogi's backstory today. He's been ridden by beginner kids for the past two weeks, and his confidence has plummeted um, when in regards to jumping, so I'm going to try and fix that today. Um, also, I was asked to try and sort out his problem and see how we can further fix it. So we'll analyze that when we're done. Um, so here we're just trotting around. Um, my idea is, is that I'm doing a lot of pulling, releasing, pulling, releasing. A lot of transitions because he was very, very quick. Um, almost uncontrollably quick. It might not look like that, but it certainly felt like that. Um, so yeah, I'm very focused on pulling. Then as soon as I get even the slightest reaction, releasing immediately. Pulling when he starts to ignore me, releasing immediately when I get a reaction. Um, he was quite at the beginning very looking around and stuff and not quite focused on me so I just tried to use lots of you know suppling with my hand now here we go up to a jump now this is where I started getting him to go over it I find that I like to put my horse in front of the jump if they're scared of it give him a pat talk to them reassure them that everything's okay um, and often I like to do this from both sides so as you'll see in a second I actually switch around and go to the other side of the jump um, I don't know why, but I have dealt with Yogi's jumping problems a lot, and I find that when I pat from both sides, it's just a little bit different, and I kind of get a little bit of a better reaction from him. Um, so I'm just patting him. He can't see me, but I'm giving a very reassuring voice. You know, I'm very, very, very reassuring in regards to my voice and what I'm doing. Then I come round. I don't take too much space because I don't want to give him too much time to think, oh, I should back out. Um, the first time he actually does go over it, which is great. So I let him off in trot. Um, what Yogi likes to do is he likes to race up to the jump when he sees it. Um, that just, I think, makes him feel more confident that he can get over it. So here, this is kind of just a test run. So I've actually got one hand gripping onto the main. So as you can see, my right hand there was gripping onto the main um, to keep me nice and balanced and to make sure if I got a crappy distance, which I'm not too concerned about today, that I didn't make him uncomfortable any, in any way or rip out his mouth or flop on his back. So I really made a big deal of holding with that inside brain. Um, also as well, when he did that, I gave him massive pats. I really wanted to reward him because as I've heard from instructors over the past couple of weeks, him weeks him jumping anything has been a real difficulty um so i'm pretty sure here we actually try and come over this big one and that doesn't work okay so he dodges out so i just open my left rein i plop him in front of it i would consider that him not expecting it and him being a bit scared to jump it so i patted him and i told him you know it's okay i didn't really discipline him here because i don't think the first time that wasn't a time for him to be disciplined it was just put him in front of it reassure him and let him know that it's okay um as well i probably should have showed it to him before but i thought hey we did that first jump pretty easily but, you know, we do have a bit of trouble with this one, but eventually we get over it. Um, but, yeah. So, again, I've done the thing on both sides where I've reassured him on both sides. Um, I feel like that just boosts that his confidence a little bit. I don't know why. It's just something I like to do, and it seems to work. Um, so, yeah. So, we're picking up, and we're going back up to trot. I come over the blue and yellow one again because he went over that one. He knows he can do it, so I want to plummet up his confidence a bit so that he's not too concerned about what just happened. We get a really weird distance, I think, but I'm holding on to that main. No. Yep, so a very big ping, um, but because I was holding on to that main, I don't feel like I ripped out his mouth or I yanked him at all, so I feel like that made it a bit more of a comfortable experience for him and for me. So I really reassured him after that. And made a big deal that, you know, good job for jumping it. And every time over the next couple of goes he refused this one, I went back to that one to reassure him you can do it. In the end, we got there. So I'm pretty sure he refuses again. So we're coming up to it. He looks at it and he's like, ah, no. Okay, I think that was not enough momentum, personally, for me. I shouldn't have come up to that. So I put him in front of it. Again, I still think that that was him being a bit scared. So I gave him a pat, but... I said, hey, as soon as he stopped. So he knows, like, I'm slowly applying more pressure. I want to give him the chance to do the right thing before I discipline him. So I come back again over the blue and yellow one to boost up that confidence again. Holding on to the main, big ping. And again as well, you'll notice too that I'm not um, continuing on around. You may notice. 
Um, I don't know why I'm doing that. I think I've kind of just wanted to really focus on the jumps and not too much about anything. I'm not concerned about his frame at all. He does go around really nicely, but I wasn't concerned about that at all to this day. So we come around again, and I'm pretty sure he stops. Now, what I do here is you'll notice on my right hand, I that was just naughty. So I'm not actually, you might see in my right hand, I'm not actually flicking him, touching him with the whip, but I'm flicking it at him, just slowly building up that pressure. I've given him a chance to do the right thing. Now he's just being cheeky, so I slowly increase that pressure that I've got. I'm not hitting him with the whip, but I'm flicking it because I figure if you're going to hit a horse, hit it on the bum. So we come over that blue and yellow one again to boost the confidence back up. And mine too. I always hold on to that mane. It's very helpful. It always helps me out with crappy distances that I might get. Um, on any horse, to be honest, I always hold my mane. Even if it's just with one hand and you're steering with your most predominant hand, um, I always am holding my mane. Especially on a pony like this, who's quite unpredictable when it comes to jumping and jumps a bit funny at times. Oh yeah, we had a lesson that came into the arena, so that's okay. So I just, just for the rest of the ride, I just worked around them, so yeah. So now I come up to it again, and on I'm constantly got my leg on, kick, 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 all the way up to it, and he jumps it. It's, that was a very big ping, but again, I had my hand gripped onto that mane, my inside hand, and he was going quite well. So I'm pretty sure we come over again. Yay, good job. He flies off a bit. I think a bird flew out and he spooked at something. That's okay. So I just let him have his little run. Tried to bring him back. Pulling, releasing, pulling, releasing, pulling, releasing. Giving him a chance to stop whilst the pressure isn't on its lowest, if that makes sense. Um, so here we're just trotting around. I'm pretty sure we go over that blue and yellow one again. Um, you may find this video quite boring because it is very repetitive, but I con me being so repetitive, I want to constantly remind him, you can do this, you can do this. Every time he jumps it, that is why we are repeating the same thing a lot. So I understand it might look quite boring, but I feel as though every time he goes over it, he's that little bit more confident about it. Um, so as you may have noticed there, he is quite rushy. So he needs to come in at quite a fast pace to feel confident enough to jump it. Um, for the first few goes, that's okay. Um, towards the more end of the ride, I try and fix that. And I think we do a pretty good job at fixing it. Um, but yeah, so I feel as though as well, a reason why he does refuse a lot is because kids tell him to go forward. Um, tell him to go up to the jump, he locks his eyes on it, he paces at it, and they panic, so they pull back, and that discourages him from jumping it. So here you'll see he's quite quick, but I don't try and pull back on him. Instead, when I'm rising, I try and mentally slow my rising down, so he has to fall into pace to feel more comfortable. So here what I did, because I felt like he was rushing, I just brought him up to the jump, I stopped, I didn't do anything, I just sat there for a bit, you know, trying to let him realise that eventually you'll get to the jump, he has the momentum to jump it. I've jumped him from a dead standstill where he's refused, and he can do that perfectly fine. So he's got the momentum. He just needs to believe he has the momentum, and he's going to get there eventually. So here you see, see how you probably can't see too much because that horse just went in front, but my rising really slowed and my body went back, but I did not pull on his mouth at all. I also, also halted on the line so that he doesn't run off after the jump because he was developing a bit of a habit of doing that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I really tried to use my body to slow him down because as soon as I pull with my hands, it discourages him completely from wanting to jump it and we're most likely going to get a refusal. Um, and I don't want that, obviously. So I'm really exaggerating the use of my body. I'm trying to rise really slow so he has to fall into pace with me and I'm not falling into pace with him. I'm really, really trying to keep that upper body back and keep my shoulders locked too so that if he does stop, I don't go over his head because it's very easy to do that on a small pony like this. This was a crap line. Sorry about that. So again, see how there... It wasn't a great distance, but I'm not too concerned about that. But as I was coming in, I really need to learn to look up. It's really annoying. Um, as I'm coming in, I really try to, again, exaggerate that slow rising try. You might not be able to see it, but mentally in my head, I'm like, I'm constantly saying to myself, slow rise, slow rise. And eventually, he began to rush a little less because it felt more comfortable if he trotted to my rising pace rather than me rising to his trot pace, if that makes sense. Huh. Hi, Prince. You guys all know who Prince is. He's so cute.
So again, whilst I'm stopping a lot is because I have to travel around unless and they've got top priority. So I have to make sure I'm in a position where I can safely jump. So we come around again. He got, does get quite quick here. But I just let him go with it. You know, I want him to feel confident. And at some point, the only time he feels confident if he's, if, if, is if he is going quick. So I'm pretty sure we come again. I think this time we're okay. So it's that one was not fast at all. That was a really nice pace. He canted off a little bit at the end but didn't race off. I think that was probably the best one we did on the blue one. That was really good. So I also try to establish my rhythm as I'm going around as I'm traveling up towards the jump and including the corner, not just when I'm on the straight line because I feel like you only have so many strides to change it. So I try and develop my rhythm whilst I'm out on the in the arena not right before my jump because that's really silly to do that okay here we have a look at this jump here I thought my dad would get better filming if I went here also again you know I want to mix it up a little um don't keep him too bored so what I do again you know I do that thing I did at the beginning I pat him I say you know what it's okay Yogi you're gonna be fine I also go on the other side I don't know why but personally I always feel like it helps with him if I pat from both sides, that could just be me, but or me, I'm making something up in my head, but I always feel that. Also notice when I circled back round, I didn't circle towards the group in the center because that would have showed him that there's an opportunity to run out if in the future when I come up to this jump to the horses that were currently centered in the center. Give him a big pat. I'm talking to him. You can't really see, but I am. Patting, patting. I really want him in the center looking at it. So we also, I can also, this is also a good chance for me to establish my straight line. Um, so yeah. So we come round. I'm, I'm constantly doing that pulling, releasing, pulling, releasing. And I'm using my body so much. You probably can't see, but I am trying really not to rely on my hands here because this is what makes Yogi want to stop your hands, ripping out his mouth. So I'm trying to use my body to help him. Now we come over, I've got that one hand locked on on the right, I think, yeah. Bing! He's so cute, oh my god. Okay, so as you can see, my inside leg has my heel very far down because I, just so I'm prepared in case he wants to try anything on me, and having my heels down, as you can see, I'm usually pretty good with Yogi because he's quite quick, so I don't have to kick too much, so my heels tend to stay in the same place. That's not usually the same with Winston. So we come again, and you probably can't see here, but I, you obviously can't see, but even though that was quite a crap distance, as I was coming in, I released completely. It was very hard to do, but I, I try and, and we come around again. Okay, so here, as you can see, we're at a bit of a faster pace now, but it's a pace that I'm comfortable with, and it's a pace where he's still getting his striding, so... This is kind of the pace we stayed at. So we kind of went from really fast to kind of slow, maybe a little bit faster, and we kind of stopped there. So it's a very moderate speed. Um, but it's what keeps me comfortable. What, it's what keeps him comfortable. Might not look the prettiest, but if that's what's going to make him jump the best and make me be able to control him the best, that's good. So we're coming around again, and I really... You can see, I'm not sure if you can see, but I really have that hand locked in. I push my heels down. Good job, Yogi. He's so cute. Oh my god, I can't handle it. And we come once more. Exact same thing. This is very repetitive. I'm sorry. So that was really slow coming in. You know, he really took a moment to think, hey, I'm going to get there in the end. So, yes, basically my analysis of Yogi is that the reason why he stops is because people pull him in the mouth when he decides that he needs to go fast in order to jump it. Um, personally, if you're at my riding school and you jump Yogi, let him go fast, use, lo use lots of pull release, and try and use your body to slow him down. Um, this could be applied to all different horses, but yeah, I hope that kind of helped you in some way. Um, it was kind of like a 15-minute lesson. Anyways, I'll see you soon. Um, actually, I think I'll see you this week on Thursday at 8 a.m. for a midweek bonus video with one of my best friends, and it's going to be very funny. Stay in tune for that, and I'll see you then. Bye!